Welcome again to Manufacturers Cup Live. You got your boy Hollywood here. And look here, we're going to go have another one of our champions on tonight. Looking forward to talking to him. But just like always, I have to throw my gratitude out to the people that make it possible for us each and every time. i like to thank our marketing partners, our sponsors of the Manufacturers Cup Series for sticking in here with us, being by our side while we keep pursuing this dream, this motorcycle racing, and keeping the Manufacturers Cup drag racing series going as we uh plan so that people can enjoy their hobbies enjoy the things that we love to do and like i said we appreciate you all support and we'll be headed over to our next sponsor event the j2 connect nationals that will be taking place may 31st to june 2nd through june 2nd at the alabama international raceway it's going to be a heck of a drag race over there and we look forward to having you all over there we're going to have should have quite a few different people that haven't been coming to give us some more fans to come on a lot of people been you know never had heard about what we were doing and got a little excited from the valdosta race they're gonna come to the second one but before we get too far down the line i want to say um to my um prayers out still to the miller family uh jason miller's family and the miller family XDA family up there. Uh, also, I want to send my prayers out to my man, George Baber, who went down, and uh, Mike 10 as well. So anybody else been out there, man, our prayers out to you. But uh, immediately the people that I know, uh, Jay and APE, send our prayers out to y'all family as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, we hope that all y'all be able to get over these trying times, you know, as as, as they are trying to lose your family members and, and also – going down on motorcycles at high speeds, uh, the body is just not built for that. So we pray for you all as well. Thank you all again for the people who came out and supported our man, Ronnie Raymond, signed the motorcycle, did the 50-50 raffle, all the things above. Really appreciated you all for doing that. We still have a little, little bit more business for the Raymond family because we sold some t-shirts and like we said, we got a bonus coming in from that right there. But before we go too far, like I said, y'all make sure y'all take a look. Y'all can check out the videos, the live. I want to thank my man Vernon and our production team. I want to thank the whole Manufacturers Cup team for, like I said, making this thing really work. Vernon for putting this video stuff together like it goes. He, he's doing a, a wonderful job. Got him a rolling studio now. We can't wait to keep uh, giving y'all more and more entertainment. But go to our, go to the website. Y'all need to go to the www racemancup.com and you can hit race watch live and it'll take you to your live stream you can see yourself you can learn a lot about what you're doing down that racetrack and if you don't if you have not had the opportunity to if you ask a few people still ask me about where the pictures are go to the website as well you can go in there hit the tab up to the right and the gallery box is gonna come down you hit gallery it's gonna take you right to the photos right there you can pull down any photos that but taking a view or, or something that you want to purchase or download, they're available to you right there. As well, if you want to see the results of the event, you can go to, um, we have down in the news, we have a newsletter that was written about the event in, in the news section. And if you go down the news section, if, you, if you're just a diehard race fan and you want to dig way into brown and round for round information, we even have the run sheets in the news. So after you go down in news from the last event you click in that event and if you want to dig way down into the run sheets you scroll all the way to the bottom down there and you'll be able to hit a link right there and that'll get you right to run run, run for run pass for pass and all the classes of the weekend there you go so you'll be able to see all the reaction times and everything so that's how we're trying to do it we're trying to keep all our things in-house Make it efficient for you all to be able to come here and look at the data. A lot of times when we're at the racetrack, people are asking us for these things. We're trying to keep it out there as, as, as consistent as possible. You know, sometimes things come up at the racetrack and take us out of there at rhythm. But we're going to do better. Ain't no excuses. But we're going to take a break. We're going to come back with our 2023 Pro Street champion, Rudy Sazatera. We drive performance. We drive passion a background in drag racing and a future in all forms of motorsports because success in one sport isn't enough 
pushing ourselves to be the best, climbing every mountain, topping every peak, until you see Fuel Tech everywhere. All right, man, your Fantasy Cup live, y'all. Look, y'all know this is a Champions Tour, and we got our 2023 Champion of Pro Street, Rudy Sanzatera. What's up, Rudy? What's going on? You told me you was up there on the computer a few minutes ago, bro. You already tuning again, huh? Yeah, I was remote tuning for a customer, and now I just flashed an ECU for one on the dyno. <clears throat> just another day at the office, I guess. It's been a long one. I've been here <laughs> since 8. Oh, man, man. So so what is a normal day? Before we get into all the meat and potatoes, what does a normal day look like for you up at your shop? And, and, and let everybody know a little bit about the name of the shop and all that stuff so you can kind of give them a little spiel just in case some people listen need some bike and stuff done. Well, I own Quick Time Motorsports. We've been in business for 30 years. Normal day is come in, try to get in at 7.30 or 8. You work 10 to 12-hour day. And then at night, you try to work on your stuff and pro street stuff. And then on Sundays or a Saturday, you try to sneak in your bikes, try to get them ready. It was a real hard year for us because I built a new bike in the off season. And that was November till the week, actually days before we left for your race. The bike wasn't even started or fired or nothing. So we showed up to your race, which we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. Uh, Mark Godden is riding what is my dad's old bike. And mm -hmm. uh, we showed up and I lost 35 pounds this year to get light. And he's 168 pounds. So we've, our, our goal is to be 175 pounds every race. And we showed up to your race. We had to add 35 pounds of lead to each bike. Oh. So we wow. were, uh, we, we struggled a little, um, I had to shorten mine up to 71 and a half inches. His is 71 and a half inches because we have a 72 inch wheelbase maximum. And then right. I wasn't very smart this year and didn't read the rule book. And there was some weight added that I didn't catch. So right. I kind of shot myself in the foot thinking I could get the bikes to, I could get my bikes with him and I on them. We weigh 645. Right. And the minimum was 660. So I figured I had 15 pounds of lead to move around, which is great. Right. But when I read the rule book, we had to weigh 675. So we showed up right. 30 pounds of light. That's the adjustment that has been made over across another sanction as well, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's my own dumb fault. I should have read the rule book a little bit better, but I didn't. Yeah. I right. built the bike. So off those rules ahead, we built that bike <laughs> off those rules the old rules and i was right. reading from the old rules and i didn't catch the new rules so it's my own it's my own dumb fault i should be better about being on top of the rules right and and and, and truly there was not a lot of rule changes throughout this year because one of the things that we looked at was i mean we bought the package as it was you know what i mean it was just that you we, we need to keep up and try to be consistent so if you're going to run in one series, you're not going to have to go make a whole bunch of changes to run in the other series. You know what I mean? So that was kind of the thing that, you know, I, I, I don't really, you know, the rules that were made in Pro Street, when I look at them, they're like, okay, I need a Pro Street guy over here. <laughs> Come over here and make sure everybody's doing this just the way it needs to be done. Because I'm telling you, man, it's just so many little bitty things. You know, I do understand why – the, why they're in place, you know, we're trying to keep, you know, parity and performance in check and more importantly, safety of these motorcycles. I mean, you went out, man, and you made some heck of a passes. If that was that new bike you built, man, I mean, how, I mean, how, how do you feel about it? Because you made some pretty dang good passes on that motorcycle. 660s, I'm thinking like 220. I went 668, 221, first round of qualifying. But the problem was, we're used to my bike going a 111 to a 113 60 foot. And we had slowed them down because they were an inch and a half shorter from last year and they're light. So last year when we ran your world finals, I weighed 195 pounds and I like that wheel. Yeah. So I like that yeah. wheelbase. Pack. I can come in at 195 pounds and weigh 665 pounds on my motorcycle and not have any lead on it. And I get to be 73 inches and I can throw a ton of power at it. 
Right. I'm trying to get both bikes to be exactly the same. So I got down to the same weight as my other rider so that both mm. bikes kind of have the same tune-ups. Well, on the first pass and testing, I missed it with his bike and it stood it straight up. So then I, I mm. pulled some power out and Mark ended up going to 697 at 215 in the first round of qualifying, which was great. This is what That's what I needed. I went 668 at 221, but we didn't have the greatest, most stellar front halves. And my bike usually has a stellar front half. I can usually go 289, 290 to the 330, and I can usually go a mid 30 in the eighth at 180. That's, that's true. We, yeah, we kind of just flat shot ourselves in the foot because I was thinking, oh, it's not going to be that much of a tune up change from 73 inches, 665, and us, me being heavy. Well, mm. it didn't work out. I tried the second round of qualifying and the third round of qualifying, we really try to step on the 60. And for some reason, I guess I don't have the weight hung in the right spot and it just wants to stand in your face. So we mm -hmm. played up safe in the first round of eliminations and I pulled some power out and it went 122 or 123 to the 60 and it went 670 at 220 something out the door. So, I mean, it was pretty good. And then I found a glitch in Mark's bike Somehow or another, it put it in second gear in the first round of eliminations. I could we watched the shifter pop up on the video. He destroyed the clutch. Mm. So we went ahead and ran that bike as a test pass after the finals. And I laid up a little bit in the finals. I'll admit it. I went a 670 at 218, but it was chasing the center line. I was trying something, mm -hmm. and for some reason the bike kind of rolled a little bit to the center. Basically, I wasn't on top of the motorcycle like I normally am. I let it drift. Mm. By the time I got it back, I had to roll out to 60% throttle for fourth and fifth gear. It still went 670 flat at like 218. But Mark was mm. right behind me, and his incremental numbers to the 330 and the eighth mile were almost a tenth faster than mine before it knocked the tire yeah. loose in, in third and fourth gear. So that bike has shown in seven laps to be super fast. And mm -hmm. the third lap, it went right into the sixes with a rider that's never been in the sixes. So, and that's the bike. Yeah, that brand new bike, right <laughs> out the truck. Third lap, it both went of them are brand new. Though. Lap, both of them are brand new, right? Yeah, my bike's got a lot of new parts in it, which yeah. I spent a lot of money trying to lighten it up this year and didn't read and the book. You're going to lose all the extra weight, too. <laughs> Dude, in our age, it, harder to lose weight it's a benefit I mean, though shit i take i'll take it i add the lead <laughs> give it to me i'll take a little bit more off this fat gut but look man we'll pay a few bills we'll be right back we're gonna switch up and talk about some other things we get right back man i'll be right back hollywood Rudy. So Rudy, the bike came out 660s, 221 miles an hour. Are you satisfied? Not really. I was wanting more. <laughs> I, we're racers. That's what we do. It actually went a. I slowed it down in the 60, and it went a 76 at 224. So the mile an hour is there. But this whole me being light and the bike being short, it didn't respond exactly the way i wanted it to i make way too much power for that wheelbase so i'm going to either have to go an up in weight rider weight which is going to be very hard to do before the next race or i'm just going to have to learn how to tune around it i mean you're a man with the tuning so that just sounds like another challenge for you right there well i mean I my, but... my, my split to the 330 has to be faster to keep up with the pro street guys and i haven't quite right. figured out how to go you know, 115 or 118 60 foot and split to a 290 and still go a 38, 35 to the eighth mile. And if I figure that mm -hmm. out, then the bike will be a rocket ship again. But I haven't quite figured it out. 
That and we're trying a new motor combination for uh, 15 to 1 uh, compression now with methanol. Turbo. Yeah. All turbo. Yeah. Turbocharged, 15 to 1. We are, I, my turbo builder and I come up with some combinations and all the car guys are 16, 17 to 1 with these big twin turbo cars. And they're, they're mm -hmm. squeezing more compression in these methanol motors to make more power. The tuning window mm -hmm. gets shorter, but they make so much torque and power. I went 224 mile an hour and 34 pounds of boost. Wow. So that, yeah, last year was 38 pounds of boost to go 225, 226. Now mm -hmm. I can do it on three pounds less boost. And so for y'all who don't know what we're talking about, he's talking about running 220 miles per hour in an eighth of a mile, 1,320 feet from a standstill. Ain't no rolling and getting it. We talking about dead standstill, dropping the hammer, managing the, my, my, trying not to let the bike stand up in your chest means he's not trying to do a wheel stand. So those are the things that we're talking about. We're gonna break it down so y'all understand, but Rudy is a diehard racer, putting in the work, runs a nice operation for sure. And, you know, you, you, you started off as a champion from last year, but you started off the season as our first event winner. I mean, you doubled up. Yep. I mean, you took, well, you took home a lot of hardware, man. You got a winner's trophy. You got the number one qualifier trophy, right? Yep. Championship trophy. A jacket. Yeah, I got the holly. They got you a holly. And you got a yep. gold yeah. card, man. You took a whole yep. handful of stuff home, man. That, that, that's pretty cool, though, seriously, though. I mean, like yeah, it, racing it awesome. and winning awards is pretty cool, though. Seriously, yeah. yeah. To walk away with a holly, the best the best part of my weekend was picking the holly up, and my son trying to eat it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that picture is the best <laughs> on the internet. Uh, in fact, that holly is in his room along with a bunch of the pro street wins that we've had over the years. But I sent the number one qualifier to to Wosner Piston. The plaque it should be there sometime this week but if it wasn't for them i couldn't do what i do you know the custom yeah. pistons that we've gotten right now the custom uh -huh. rods all of the stuff that you have to have in this industry to run and be competitive in pro streets it's it's hard so 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 you said wosler right yep well, where's one of okay uh they're willoughby ohio uh based out of germany mm -hmm and they build all of our custom pistons. I was a little nervous because the pistons didn't come in until about a week before we were leaving. Mm. So my motor is the only one with this custom piston setup. The other motors are only 12 to one, 13 to one, somewhere in that area. Mine was the first one that we did. We cut the head and did a, a 15 to one compression deal. And it seems to, my, my turbo guy was right. The more compression you can stuff in methanol, the faster it'll go. And the torque is just tremendous down low. Yeah, especially if you can burn it, you know, burn the fuel, you can compress it. But if you got fuel to burn, that's what makes the power. So and when you got, I mean, I know that once we got started, there, there we go. There's, there we go. <laughs> he said, he's eating yep. the wild, eating the holly, man. Eat the holly. Yep. Hey, man, yeah, that's, that's pretty like, cool, man. That's a prize. I possession. love it, man. Yep. That's Lucky Luciano right there, y'all. Yep. Yeah, that's my prized possession, both of them. I finally got me a Holly. And that's what I worked hey, for last year. That was that's pretty cool, you know. It's like, you know, and I know it's kind of as crazy as my own as image of myself, but it's still I almost like want to win one my damn self. <laughs> <laughs> like I do a show I really, on race. I mean, I mean, I won one as a crew chief with Destiny Spurlock when she won at Rockingham in the Pro Ultra 460. So I have a silver holly. But, um, you know, it was just kind of a thing, man. We were messing around, and, and it came to fruition. But just like anything else, you know, you have to start somewhere, right, with something. And it's a pretty cool award. It's, you know, and I didn't want to do anything cheesy or anything. I wanted something to mean something and have – you know, something that, you know, could go as a part of a legacy. You know what I mean? Like the filming part of the deal is, you know, the, the, the camera and the holly represents, you know, filming, you know, bringing, you know, people to our industry through filming. 
And, you know, a lot of times when people talk to me about racing, they forget that I'm a racer, but I'm really a production company that bought a racing series. So it's like, I want to make you a star more than I care about how fast you go. And you know what I mean? Because I think that if I can make you a star, you can get some more money and then you can be as quick as you want to be. But I think that's the goal that a lot of people are missing about what, what I, you know, we want to make sure the racing is beautiful because I absolutely love watching it. I mean, I, I mean, I, I can, I can tell you so many passes. I watch all those live streams end to end. I watch them end to end and they're getting better. You know, I get Vernon his props. I mean, like we're getting better and better each live stream because like now we're getting downstream shots, down track shots, I'm sorry. And, you know, as they're going, zooming in, catching the scoreboard. So, and we know where we make mistakes at, but, you know, we're really proud of the progress and, you know, seeing the racers happy on that, on that camera means a lot to us. That's what we're aiming for. So how does the media and how does that help you with, what you're doing do you use it as any kind of reference with your after the race type pass because i was talking to a racer and he was like man we should just have the live stream on while we're at the track because then we'll know what's going on because they can hear the announcers better and it's on television i am not the greatest at, at keeping up on social media <clears throat> I, I need to be better i actually just need to hire someone to do it because i am so busy here trying to keep up on it my wife does a good job with the social media but I could do way better. What I love about the way you guys run it is we actually can get a video of a pass, see what we've done wrong. We can look at our pictures, see what we've done wrong. And along with all of our crew's camera phones and a professional video of a what of our passes, it helps us out tremendously. And social media, it's a double-edged sword. It'll either hurt you or help you. Um, I love social media. But I just don't have enough time to to stay on social media showing what we're doing all the time. So my wife always my wife's always said she wants to do like a a, a complete live YouTube channel of just what we do around here in a day. And I don't think people want to see that. <laughs> hey, I don't know, man. They keep telling me the same thing. Like just turn the camera on. I'm like, okay. Like, who wants to watch me work on the golf cart, but then 300 people watch you work on the golf cart? And you're like, okay, I'll work on the golf cart. <laughs> That's what I got to do because ultimately, you know, we're trying to attract business and trying to attract awareness to the brands in which we both operate quick times over there. Hollywood Drag Race and Manufacturers Cup on this side. So we're, we're actually trying to bring more people to our sport. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah. We, we have to do it. You know, it's crazy that, but we have to take those, those, those roles on. We'll pay a few bills. We'll be right back. We're going to switch up. I want to learn how you got into this, how you got all into this pro street stuff, man. I bet you that, we didn't get into that last time we was on the live, no. the other live, but I want to know how you got into this stuff. We'll be right back. Rudy okay. Sagittaria. All right, all right, all right. We got my man Rudy all the way up from Missouri over here, our 2023 Pro Street Champion, Hollywood over here, all the way in the ATL. So talk to me, Rudy. So how you get all tied up in this name, Pro Street Motorcycle Racing, man? Because I know, like, that's like that's like the bug of the bug, the bug to get when you want to race it. <laughs> that's like a whole big old shot of it right there, bro. For real. We, uh, I'm guessing I'm one of the originals still left from the first race ever in Bowling Green. We showed up. So kind of how Pro Street started was you had unlimited 60 inch class all motor and 68 inch wheelbase all motor. And we had a 68 inch all wheelbase, a 68 inch all motor, uh, 68 inch wheelbase all motor bike. And we showed up in Bowling Green. But the problem is it was our street racer. So what we did was we put a new body on it to go run it in Bowling Green. And then we take that body off 
at night and we'd put a different body on and we'd put it in the back of a pickup truck and we ran around Bowling Green street racing. And <laughs> that's kind of how this all started from, you know, like when I met Joe Franco and Joe Morosco and all them down in Daytona, uh, Larry wow. Phillips from hardcore, all of them, that's, we're all street racers and right. street bike shootout was kind of, it was like, who had the biggest, you know, street bike shootout and pro street is let them kind of hang and who's got the most amount of money. And right. in the beginning, it wasn't that way. It was rider talent. And right. we would take our street racer, you know, the bike that was, it, we showed up to Bowling Green with a bike that was 64 inches long. We didn't even try yeah. to come 68 inches. The bike would go eight sixties. Yeah. And it went eight sixties on a motor with a hand clutch, old cool GSXR. Yeah. That's so cool. we we're basically this whole company started because we street raced. I never mm. morphed or ever imagined morphing this company into something that is as big as it is now, because basically I'm just a street racer and how every many, once in a how while, many years, like, you know, huh? How many years? You how many years at the company now? Thirty years. We've been in business since nineteen ninety four. That's so right there. Go ahead. Thirtieth year. Thirtieth year, and man. We, Congratulations. Thank you. We still don't we don't street race motorcycles anymore. Now cars are a different story. I still dabble in some cash days on the street or something like that with a race car. It's still mm -hmm. kind of fun, and you'll never take that out of people. You right. know. But that's how this all started is we're just over glorified street racers and then people started bringing us stuff and now it's morphed into something that i can't even keep up with even with all the employees <laughs> we have you know i mean but but then we were talking before the uh live where we were saying that you know in order to keep that type of business going you have to get almost to be like the, the service service center of the motorcycles period so the full builds you lose money on full builds. I don't care what anybody says. You can't bill for every minute you work on the bike. When you do service, you can bill for every minute. You did an oil change, you did some tires, you did a set of fork seals. You bill every minute on that and you make more money doing service. The margins are better on the parts. Yeah. Race, race parts have very little margin in them. You're lucky to make 25% margin on a race part. Whereas on fork seals and oil, you can make 35, 38%. You know what I mean? You make more money and doing service. Work. Yeah, and you got more clients. I mean, it's the same with plumbing, man. I mean, I, we were talking about the same thing. Like, I mean, you, people ask me, you want to do some construction? I'm like, I know. I mean, I've tried that, you know, <laughs> like, like, you know, you, you end up being a bankroll of a project until it gets completed. And either you banking it with time or you banking it with your real money and you know then you'll be lucky if you get paid on time and you know i mean i just i i've always liked the idea of going and, and fixing some things and getting paid versus the whole gotta wait till this part like he said the whole complete bill situation then you got to make sure it runs and all that good stuff versus and then you you're know, married and to build, you're married to the build for the rest of your life you know <laughs> yeah You'll be laying in bed and a client will call you <laughs> from Australia and ask you to log in and it's 2 a.m. But it's, you know, 9 a.m. there, you know, it's just right. it's a very hard thing to keep on top of. And I try to separate my personal life from the business life. And it, well, I got a very my wife is a saint when it comes to this, because she knows mm -hmm. that the phone's going to ring 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to lay my head down at night you know, 10 30 or 11 and I turn my phone on to vibrate. And then you wake up to 10 text messages in the morning at 6 AM. You wow. know, it's crazy. Man, so, and, man, it's a good, and everybody's got a good problem. Sleep schedule. It, it could be a good problem to have. <laughs> it catch 22 at the same time. Right. Yep. I, uh, yeah. I can honestly say I'm on my last full build. Um, I've said this before, but I don't know if I can take any more of these full builds. I don't mind building a turbo kit or wiring a bike, but when you're short neck in the frame and you're building the subframe and you're putting the whole chassis together and you're building the motor and you're building the turbo system and you wire it and you fire it and you give them back everything, 
Everybody yeah. thinks it's like a TV show. It can be done in an hour. And oh, no. It can't. You're a year out on a build. And, and then yeah. in between service, it's just hard. It's a very hard thing to keep up on. Right. Well, at least you know where you are. And, you know, you being realistic with yourself as to what you need to do to get, survive in your business. I mean, it's like, you know, I was talking about this other motorcycle that I have. And, you know, as 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 much as it, it appears that it's race ready, there's still quite a bit more stuff that needs to be done before it ever gets to get to the track. And, and you really have to be patient with this type of stuff because you know, you can go and you can look bad doing it and tear stuff up in the learning prior, and that's no fun. So I much rather, like you said, do it right the first time, learn it, make sure that when we do get the ability to go out and uh, bang it at the racetrack, it's gonna do what, it, 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 what it's supposed to do because you look like you had your, your stuff together down after this first race. I tell you, it doesn't look like you skipped a beat. All the stuff that you told me earlier, I'm like, man, he is by. I need to put some boots on or something. He over here just sandbagging on this live or something. Because this seems like you was going A to B. A couple of pairs I did see where like you spun the tire or something like that. But you came. We were learning. You got bro. Yeah. My thing is, we didn't fire the one bike up. And then we didn't ever lay it on a two-step until Tuesday. And we were loading the trailer on Wednesday to come to you. The bike, mm. that was the first time the bike had been on the two-step. And even my crew chief, John, John Chant goes, well, how do we know it's even going on the track? I'm like, it's either going to go fast or we're going to lay it all in the oil pan. There's our, those are our two options at this point. Man, I'm going to get you a blanket. To <laughs> we were going we're gonna to rely on them DME carbon fiber engine blankets to see if they were actually going to work this year because hey, well, I, I told John I was willing to lay it in the oil pan. Nah, it's all good, man. We had some when I started looking at that stuff, man. Looking at those bikes, I was like, man, that's gonna be a hard one right there to make all these work. So you know, that was another thing. Just making adjustments as we go, man. You know how it goes. You know, you you gotta learn. You live and learn, learn to live. But man, look here, Rudy. It's been a blessing, man. Talking to you again. Congratulations for being our 2023 Pro Street Champion. Got you a Holly. Man, you may try to get you a 2024, Holly, man. Look at you. But we're going for it. We're going for another 24. Lucky Luciano over there about to eat the chocolate Hollywood head off, man. Come on, Lucky. Let me have my head back, baby. <laughs> yeah, well, man. We really look here, Rudy, man. That's a great place to, to race and a great organization to race for, and it's such a family atmosphere. We just really appreciate everything you've done. Hey, man, you know, I told you from the beginning that the goal was to make it where we can let the kids run a little free and, and, and get to meet people on their own accord without worrying about somebody doing something stupid or whatever. And that's the goal, man. You know, I ran around as a kid at the racetrack when I was eight years old. You know, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking, like, how guarded I am of my eight-year-old kids. And I'm thinking about, like, when I was eight, my dad could not have known where I was at at all <laughs> once we got to the racetrack period so you know with that being a part of you know my experience and i remember how much it impacted me in, in a positive way as it related to dealing with people that you know i want to give it to people again you know i want to give my kids an opportunity to come out and do that again without worrying about stuff like that but i love you know, how we do it all kids the race yeah, to raise the kids. Yeah. It's bad. That's the best part yeah, about man. going is family. It's a family atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's been it's been really good, man. I'm, and it's all because of the racers too. You know, the racers and their families. You know, we everybody is kind of self checking themselves to make sure everything goes well. And I think that's what's the recipe for success is being right here. But look, see you. I, I don't think I'm gonna see you in Alabama, right? You never know. You never know what track I'll show right. to you. <laughs> hey, but listen here. Check this out now. Alabama is a fast racetrack, a very yep. fast racetrack. I think it's the quickest, one of the quickest passes that Stevie Fast just went over there. It was in Alabama, right? Yep. He went a 648. He's got the fastest yep. radial car on the planet. That track there is known go. for radial car racing. They're going go. to great so, tracks. 
I love Alabama. We've been there with radial cars. It's a great place. Your track selection is great this year. Like I said, you can't beat the family organization that's going on right now. If the, everybody Montgomery. doesn't go, they're missing out. Yeah. Montgomery just had a good race too, man. My buddy Mike Hill just drew another good race down there at Montgomery. A lot of people came. It was pretty good. These tracks are known for bringing people. We just got to let them know that we're coming. That's mm -hmm. the deal right there. We, we and I'm yep. trying my best. I've been I already been to Steel twice already. Uh, so no, twice this year I think already. But just gotta let people know we coming, man. That's it. And you know, and they they know I'm coming, but then they need to know you coming. And then yep. all the other people who race with us, they need to do the same thing. You know, I see a lot of the racers are now, you know, spreading the word and they're happy. I'm not gonna be messing with this formula for as a as a respect as a respect to the schedule. I think that it's, it's, it gives everybody sufficient amount of time to get their stuff together properly and they're not rushing and, and missing things, and which then causes us to have mistakes that happen on the racetrack. Some things are just going to happen, but I think with the extra time is giving people an opportunity to look over their bikes and so forth and coming out better prepared. So, you know, we look forward to it. Second race, still Alabama International Dragway, J2 Connect Nationals, baby. We're going to be there May 31st, April 2nd to my fallen guys. And we're down, you know, like I said, I, my prayers go out to y'all. I hope y'all heal quick. Get back out here and come out here and uh, get back to your hobbies, man. But like I said, Rudy, love y'all, man. Hey, Tell a little Lucky, don't eat me up, man. Don't eat me up up there, man. <laughs> I, need to, I need to see if we up there when I get back next year unless you're going to get you another one of them hollers. But we love y'all, man. We'll see y'all next episode. Man, you 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 like, you'll get you another one, huh? I'm going to give me another one. I'll have another right, one next. There you week. go. Thank That's you. my man Rudy, y'all. We'll see y'all we'll see y'all next Tuesday. We're going to have another one of our champions on next Tuesday and uh we'll put it out and let you know who's going to be available. Love y'all. Peace. Man Cup Live. Thank you.